Good morning, class. It's currently 7.25 Wednesday morning. That's Eastern time. And I think the date is the 29th. I'm trying to read my watch. The numbers are very small. Um, I had um, committed in the syllabus to doing a class on the future of database marketing. And um, so that's what this is. And this is definitely the last lecture you'll be delighted to hear of the term. And um, I'm actually going to take uh, a couple of slides from this class and see if I can put them up in a discussion forum to see if uh, we can maybe kick this around a little bit as we've done when we have a live class. So anyway, um, database is the heart. <laughs> right. So we're talking about the future. We're looking into the crystal ball and trying to look at some current trends and feelings and wisps of this and that in the air, so to speak, although we have to be a little worried about those these days. And we're going to try to think about, you know, how these trends will develop. Um, and to start with, let's just go back to a, a base, one of the two of the basics, and that is that database marketing is to Create and maintain a bond of loyalty between you and your customer that will last a lifetime. And those of us who have dogs are probably glad we do uh, these days because they are nice, comforting to have around in most cases. Goal of database marketing is genuine customer satisfaction. What is database marketing? So developing long-term loyal customer relationships. Customer relationship management. Now, um, <clears throat> for the last few years, uh, when I've taught this course, and it's just taught once a year in the spring, um, I've asked some of the people who've contributed by a guest lectures specifically to do a little forecasting for me. And so I looked at the forecasts that were done for last year's class, and I thought they looked pretty good. So I'm going to uh, include those, and we'll look at those to start with. So this is Walter Kerner. You remember him. He joined us <coughs> pretty early in the term. He is uh, the head of security, database security, and system security here at FIT, and always lectures my class and does a very, very nice job of it. So this is <laughs> what he said in spring 2019, right? Commerce moving online. Well, that's happening even more now, isn't it? Devices getting smarter. Demographic shift is towards consumers who value convenience over privacy. Hmm. Big data analytics, analytics coming cheaper and more effective to execute. For five years, we'll be leaving a bigger digital information footprint. Boy, that's for sure, which implies more CRM and database marketing. He thinks there may be some kind of mega breach, but if all those things didn't re cause a reaction, he wasn't sure what would. And security, as he says, a cat and mouse game, that's a great way to put it. The good guys and the bad guys uh, one up each other. The good guys won't, the bad guys are ahead, the good guys won't ever catch up. It's like shoplifting. As long as you keep the cost manageable, then it's just a cost of doing business. Well, that's a very good, very good analysis from Walter. And um, he added this uh, later. Overall, I stand by what I said last year. So, okay. <clears throat> this is uh, from Paul Davis. We didn't hear from Paul this year, but he's, two years before that, he was nice enough to lecture my class. Paul is a very brilliant guy who I had the pleasure of working with when I ran marketing at 1-800-Flowers.com. Paul was in charge of the database. And um, 
since then. He's done amazing things. He is a real data scientist at a very senior level. He's had a great career. Flies his own airplane. <laughs> very interesting guy. So, um, being based traditional relational based databases to text sentiment based mining huge amounts of search data and social posts to build more predictive based models of consumer behavior. Hmm. So psychographics, more psychographics based on these things going on in the social networks. And Paul added, he sees Python um, taking more of a share of the space from SAS and R, the ease of programming and the integration into new artificial intelligence tools from Google, such as TensorFlow. Okay, so Python. So if you're going to study anything at Data Camp, you might want might want to make it Python. Okay. So um, that's from those two uh, gentlemen, and I've got another prediction from Walter that comes up a little later in the in the uh, lecture. Okay, so this is just me <clears throat> putting things together. Um, more digital data and faster computing. Okay, so very much as like what uh, Walter said about bigger data footprints. Are we going to have less privacy or more privacy? What's the arc of that? Uh, um, issue. We'll have more automation. Actually, I see that with what's going on now with the COVID-19 situation where we have, quote, essential employees, unquote, um, being recognized by all the rest of us in a way uh, and starting to demand uh, more and better, more pay and better treatment. And I'm just referencing right now to um, hearing on the radio that uh, the president has issued a, a uh, you know, a defense department, whatever, order um, to meet producing plants, that they have to remain open, that they're a vital part of the economy. But as those of you who are following the news may have heard, some of those plants have been hotbeds for the, the for COVID, and so the workers have refused to work there, and many of them are still refusing to work there because um, they want better health protections. And so there are those who are predicting that there'll be a rise in worker, essential worker power, negotiating power, again for better pay health insurance, benefits, uh, etc. Maybe even another rise of unions, and unions have definitely been on a down slide now for years and years. Um, so what is management's and the owner's of company's response going to be to those demands? And one response will be to push even harder to automate everything they can possibly automate. Uh, machines don't go on strike. Uh, maybe they will, uh, you know, in transformers, but uh, I think we've got a few years to go before we get there. Less security, communications tsunami. Um, yeah, that certainly is happening, and that's going to grow too after COVID. Impact of COVID. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about the impact of COVID towards the end of the rest of this. I'll kind of weave it in, but we're going to focus on it at the end, and that's the content I'm going to try to post for discussion. More digital data. So trend number one, these are our trends, right? There are five of them. Trend number one, more digital data and faster computing. So there's all kinds of stuff here. This shows uh, <laughs> all kinds of data being linked, all kinds of things. Okay, um, data will be mined from searches and social posts and go to Universal Data Hub. I think this is a 
when I pulled this, but I did this last year. It's a picture of a universal data hub. I looked it up and asked for an image. <laughs> so, okay. So the hub is a place that's gathering everything about, uh, about us. Now, everything that happens will be captured as data. As more and more data are captured, sophisticated causal analyses like um, multivariate analyses, for instance, uh, will enable us to solve unsolvable problems and to better predict the future. So this is, um, you know, an example is I sent out that uh, article a couple of weeks ago linking air quality to COVID mortality rates. Okay, the worse the air quality, the higher the mortality rate for COVID. So you could just imagine that there were, you know, a hundred or so or more variables on the um, on the independent variable side, diet, you know, gosh knows how much, concentration of hospitals, how many fast food places, concentration of fast food places, uh, you know, on and on, and, and to look for the best correlation. So we learn interesting things from that. Well, here's another thing about more data, and I've already talked about this, I think, in the last presentation, the data scientist is... Uh, a uh, interesting job and uh, Glassdoor number one rated as best job in USA for 2018 I haven't looked at it I mean I looked at salaries and openings I didn't look up the actual job but um, it's a good job more data more data scientists right what is the future in 10 years data science is a great field to go into yeah <laughs> for, for, for you guys something to keep in mind so issue number two was uh, privacy. Will there be less privacy and more data being mined and sort of given over for commercial uses? Or will, there, will we move towards more privacy in our country and, and in the world? USA, ISPs have right to all our browsing data. Those are the internet service providers. By the way, that's the, the cable that runs into our home. So whether you hit Comcast or... Uh, you know, whoever your cable provider is giving you that basic service over the uh, um, coaxial cable, the digital cable, they know everything. <laughs> they know Google and Facebook and uh, they know all kinds of browsing. And they may not know. Every time you go to a website, they know it. Why are the USA and European Union so different? Now here... I put a trend towards globalization. I happen to think that despite the fact that the current administration of the U.S. has gone the other way, big time, back from globalization, more towards just worrying about what's in our own country and, you know, the heck with everybody else. And um, I think, in my opinion, the overall trend is more towards globalization. And, and something like, in fact, this virus shows that the better countries can work together, not only states work together under a national government, which isn't happening very well in our country right now in terms of the national government's participation, but countries need to work together under a world leadership, under the United Nations, I'm sure, would be the appropriate um, aegis for, for it. But they're we need to work together better all the countries in the world when things like this come up this is a worldwide problem and we'll solve it better if we work together and share cure ideas and share equipment share knowledge share what we learn about it so uh, again i think that despite the move backwards now it's like many times it's two steps forward one step back okay i believe there'll be more globalization and that is the trend just exacerbated by things like COVID. COVID, excuse me. Is there a trend towards liberalization worldwide as younger generations get power? I think there is, uh, big time. And if you think back 10, 15 years, of course, you guys were um, <laughs> uh, pretty young then. Uh, but um, things have changed in our country um, for gay rights. Uh, legalizing marijuana, whoever thought that would happen in many states, 
uh, Bernie Sanders getting the support he's gotten for two 